Argentina beat Georgia 25 points to 7, therefore booking their spot in the quarterfinals and setting up a date with New Zealand next weekend. But the really true big news of the day has to be, of course, withdrawal. Dan Carter from this tournament out for the rest of it, of course, with that groin strain, his replacement for the Canadian matches, which is coming up right after our little analysis uh, heading forwards is Colin Slade, a man coach Graham Henry has tremendous faith in. No, I just think, uh, you know, Colin Slade's safety is number 258 after, after Daniel. Um, he hasn't played a lot of footy, but he's got a lot of ability. And I think it's important that um, we've got a lot of belief in him. And I'd hope the media would show that as well. I uh, can't do the job for you, but we need support here. And um, so I think it's a big game for him this afternoon. Um, like he, in his last game, he got better as the game went on and showed some good touches. So he's got a good opportunity today. Um, and he'll have great support around him. And so I think, you know, the decisions about the future in 10 uh, will look after themselves. Uh, we've got plenty of time to do that. And Colin's the number one at the moment. Oh, I think it's too close to the game to start filling his head with all sorts of different ideas. Um, he knew very well that he was playing yesterday at captain's run. Uh, he's been training in that position all week, so they've been sharing the time. And you have a certain menu of information that you need to take onto the field. He's got that menu of information that he can call on. And by cluttering him with extra information now, Will show, will show a sign for, to him from me that I don't trust him, and I do, and he will do the job. So I just think he needs to be left to do the business correctly, and, and uh, so he doesn't need a lot of people in his ear. And um, I'm sure he'll do the job well. We cannot fault Graham Henry's experience. Man coaching his 100th Test match against the All Blacks, or for the All Blacks, this afternoon. As I'm joined on the panel alongside, of course, Stuart Barnes. Jeremy Paul, the big man from South Africa. He's a World Cup winner back in 1995. Cobus Visa, welcome along. Welcome to New Zealand. Kia ora. As they Kia ora. Say. Thanks, guys. Great to be here. Graham Henry, you just heard what he said. We yeah. all heard the news, of course. I saw a little tear uh, roll down your eye about Dan Carter. You, yeah, yeah you've got to feel for, for... First, you've got to feel for, for the player, for Carter. I mean, uh, it hasn't been his, his, uh, his tournaments in the past three he's been in and it's, it's a huge blow for him to start with it's a huge blow for the team uh, it's a massive blow for Graham Henry and knowing Graham he, I believe he's a genuine person you could see he feels for the player as well um, and, and, and they put the player first and, and that's a good sign but it's a massive blow it's, a ma it's, it's huge to, to try and replace a player like that he will leave a definite gap in the team there is no doubt but as a bearer of good news from South Africa to you guys in New Zealand it's not the end of the world yet, guys. They, they, you guys have a really good team, and I have to say that if I'm if I'm true to my heart, you guys have a, a a great side, and you'll have to cope with that if you want to be the world champions. Now we have moved on, JP. What another thing Graham Henry said there? Colin Slade, inexperienced. I mean, Dan Cutter, eighty odd Test mm. match. Colin Slade, not that many. Not trying to clutter his mind. Not a bad philosophy. Oh look, I, I think uh, being in Graham Henry's position, it's it's very difficult the day after announcing that Dan Carter is out of the World Cup. So you have to be positive. You have to show uh, signs to the rest of the team and to the nation as well, New Zealand, that, that the All Blacks are OK. My, my only concern about, uh, about Slade is whether or not he can do it for four games. Um, uh, or three games, sorry, with the, with the, with the quarter-final, um, the semi-final, and then the final. I mean, today's really, for me, not really a true test. The acid test is when you come to the quarter-final. As we know now, Argentina are their opponents, so uh, hopefully we can, we'll probably be able to get a bit out of this game. We'll probably find out how they are going to play against Argentina now that Colin Slade is there. So it'll make an interesting game for this next one. Stu, I know Graham also wants us to tread lightly on, on Colin Slade and, and, and not presume anything, but we saw his performance against Japan. We yeah. had some criticisms of his performance against Japan. Is he our man? Well, our, our job's not to be anyone's cheerleader, is it? Our job is to call it as you see it. And, and Graham Henry is absolutely right to say, I have faith in his man, Colin Slate. He's got to say, he's got to buoy him up, you know. And if you're a believer, faith is a wonderful thing. But for those of us who are watching the game and looking at evidence, we're looking for mm. something rational. And, and Colin Slade looked nervous in a New Zealand team that beat Japan yeah. by 80-odd points. Now, that's a fact, and you can say as much as you like till the cows come home. We know Carter is the greatest fly-half on this planet. We know Slade is, a, is an inexperienced player in comparison. 
but he has got to get hold of this ball today, not try and beat Carter, but he's just got to try and slot into the pattern and he's got to look as if he knows and believes what he's doing because the players around him will sense there's no Carter there and they'll be thinking, is this guy in a pivotal position aware of what's going on? You know, for 95 Cobus, Stransky drew, uh, grew as that tournament went on and you could almost feel around it that sort of sense, well, Joel's not going to let us down as he inevitably didn't at the end. I suppose, guys, Canada, I have no doubt New Zealand will beat Canada comfortable, but they have the ability to sort of get into your face. It's those kind of games that they, mm. it becomes niggly, and I don't mean fighting, I just sort of get the hand uh, onto the ball and sort of tug on the jersey. They, it becomes frustrating. I think it'll be a huge eyes will be under ma immense pressure on Slay today yeah. with just being heard the news that you know uh, Carter has gone. So if he gets a great game today and he can, then I think it'll sort of soften the blow a little bit. If he doesn't, as you said, uh, make the grade as, as an, against Japan, you know there will be more panic buttons. Well, I'll go back to the uh, 07 World Cup uh, with the uh, with the Wallabies. Um, Stephen Larkham out was out injured. Uh, mm. Beric Barnes, as a young 5'8", came in and filled his shoes. Had an absolute Absolute brilliant game against Japan, then went on and uh, and then unfortunately had a shocker when it came to the acid test of, of quarterfinals and semi-finals rugby. And, and this is my only concern is that, yes, I believe Slade will come out and have a great game because the mm. rest of the side will bond around them today. They'll make sure that it's as easy as possible. I mean, they'll do their clean outs, they'll do their tackling. But the only problem I feel for Slade is... Is it going to be a true like indication of what we're going to see for the quarterfinal? Okay, it's not just Dan Carter of this tournament, though. From your team, though, France Stain. I mean, the man who can kick it from 60 odd metres, pivotal you know, man in your back line. I mean, that's a huge blow. Huge blow. And only difference between us and this stage, it seems to be New Zealand. We still believe we can win the World Cup. New Zealand has given up, it seems, by now. But don't give up. We would like to, no disrespect, my buddy, but we would like to play uh, you guys very soon you again. You're going to get past um, the first, mate. Come I heard, on. You, you have other worries. I heard Susie's in town again. So you guys got massive problems on hand. Um, Kobe, but you're lucky they put you in the end and my two bounces are in the way. No, yeah, to, 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 lean to, over there. To be fair, I think Francois Stein has uh, slotted nicely into that centre position. Yeah, He's yeah. done well. I think is a very, very talented yeah. footballer. He's shown that. I think it's a big blow for South Africa as well. It's also talk of, of Hochard having such serious concussion that he oh. might also go home. So it's serious problems also uh, for South Africa uh, in midfield. And that's a really good impact sub. But Stain, I mean, he's played superbly. Of course, four years ago when they won the World Cup, he sort of got the break and found himself in the team and did superbly well. This time, his kicking game is vital to South Africa. He's a very big blow. Right, uh, because we're talking injuries, we better bring in the All Black captain who of course is injured also out of this match versus the Canadians he's down in Wellington and he's alongside our very own Mel Robinson yeah well it's the news that uh, we woke up with today um, obviously Dan Carter out well you're his mate have you caught up with him today I haven't actually seen him this morning but I obviously uh, went and saw him last night after he realized that the worst news you could get um, oh, you just feel for the guy you know uh, pretty devastated you know having it ended like that but uh, I guess that's sport isn't it and uh, you know it can happen to any one of us any time so you know we just got to, I suppose from a team point of view you just got to keep marching on. I know um, you won't talk him up too much because you do have a couple of other first fives in the squad now but he is pretty crucial to your team isn't he? Oh look he is um, there's no doubt he's been He's been in that position, uh, you know, the main guy there for a long time. So he leaves a big hole. Um, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, you'd, you'd like it for it not to happen. But uh, it is, that's the way it is now. And, you know, it doesn't stop the tournament. We've got to carry on. And you're right, uh, the, the two guys that are going to, uh, obviously, well, Colin for, for starters today, um, he was going to make sure we help him. And I've got no doubt he'll, uh, he'll, he'll do a good job. Now, your foot, you're obviously not playing today. I'm just wondering, do you need me to massage your foot or something? Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> don't know whether it's going to help, though, to be honest. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that, um, again, ideally you'd uh, be 100% to be out there playing today, but it's, uh, it's just a bit niggly, and you know, the right decision was to make sure it's right for next week. Um, yeah, I don't want to take anything away from what we've got to do today, but uh, you know, I didn't want to be struggling through next week and, uh, you know... Uh, struggling to train, so hopefully uh, a week off will uh, ensure that we're ready to go next week. Hey, just lastly, how good has this rugby been this weekend? Were you like sitting there on Friday night yelling at the TV set like everybody else? Yeah, sort of. I've been watching with interest, there's no doubt, and 
I, I think you get to this point, you know, every team, you know, we just talked about our uh, issues, every team, whether they are uh, got, you know, big squads or whatever, have got those sort of uh, things going on and it just shows you, you know, you're not quite there or you're, you know, a bit tired, anything can happen. So it's, I think everyone that would have been watching would have uh, enjoyed it, whatever team you're barking for. OK, hopefully the game goes good for you guys and get better soon. Thanks, Mel. Yep, thanks very much, Mel. Thank you, Richie. Nearly out of the time, guys. Showtime just around the corner in Wellington. Key points for you for this match, Cobus? I think a, ter a character test for New Zealand. Uh, every team gets uh, crucial injuries, but they need to stand up, they need to front up, and it starts today against Canada. Well spoken, Cobus. I think it's, it's all about the composure of the All Blacks today, how they minimise, I suppose, the reaction of Dan Carter being out. They need to show to the public, they need to show their fans that they are still a force in this World Cup and it's not about the, the tries that they score today, it's about the composure. It's a, a rookie seven in Victor Vito, a rookie ten under pressure, Cowan fighting for his All Black place. Kieran Reid has to cement this thing together, he's my key man. Yeah. So here we go, Kieran Reid's back, folks. Andrew Hoare is the skipper, Mills Molina, the 99th Test match New Zealand v Canada after the break. Coverage of New Zealand versus Canada is brought to you by Telecom, Bunnings Warehouse, and Heineken. Match 38 of the Rugby World Cup and once again the capital city Wellington plays host as we cross the suburbs from the airport over the harbour we arrive eventually at the Wellington Regional Stadium which has hosted top class rugby since the iconic Athletic Park closed back in 1999. And welcome everyone to the Wellington Regional Stadium for the final match in Pool A at the Rugby World Cup in 2011. The New Zealand All Blacks to play Canada. And uh, no matter what happens here today, Canada will be on their way after this game because both New Zealand and France have qualified from uh, Pool A. Tonga with that magnificent win over France yesterday into third place. And uh, Canada, of course, could overtake them. Well, the crowd's still pouring in on a cloudy day but there's been very little rain so far and it is uh, fairly windy but of course the stadium isn't closed and so it will be swirling for the goal kickers in particular here at the stadium in Wellington. So the arrival of the Canadian team they played their, their last game only on Tuesday in Napier against Japan but they want to finish on a high note. They did have a win over Tonga, which was a big moment for them. Let's have a look at their players, and the front row is well established. Although Props Marshall and Bidens have just 20 caps between them, Captain Pat Reardon has vast experience. Jamie Cudmore and Jeb Sinclair both play in Europe, with Cudmore at Clermont in France and Sinclair at London Irish. The loose trio of Carpenter, Kleberger and O'Toole starting together in a test match for the 12th time just one short of the canadian record into the backs now and halfback ed furhurst is now in his third world cup while ander munro was cool against japan scoring the vital try and kicking the crucial penalty as well there's real power in midfield particularly in the form of dth funder merva who's joined by ryan smith who's in his third world cup and the only change from the Japan game comes at fullback where Matt Evans replaces James Pritchard. And this allows uh, Connor Trainer to play on the wing. So those are the 15 players who will take the field for Canada. And uh, joining me in commentary today, former All Black, Grant Fox. Good afternoon, Nisbo. Grant Nisbet, and good afternoon, everyone. Well, Kieran Crowley's largely kept his side together right throughout 
the four matches in Rugby World Cup pool play so far in Pool A, this being the fourth match for Canada. They're a side that plays with a huge amount of passion. They do the basics very well. Their set piece is quite strong. They play the game very physically. And they will be keen to do very, very well and just put up a very solid performance against the All Blacks this afternoon. One of the faces of the tournament there, Adam Kleberger. Well, a very good crowd in attendance, at his, as you'd expect, at an All Black game. Place is sold out. And uh, the All Blacks, well, they'll still be reeling, no doubt, from the announcement made at 10 o'clock this morning that Dan Carter's World Cup is over. And Richie McCaw not playing today, but that is just precautionary. But the big news really out of the camp is that Dan Carter is gone for the tournament. But they'll uh, look to put that behind them as we look at the players today and into the front row. And a big surprise yesterday for Andrew Hoare as he was handed the captaincy with the defection of uh, Dan Carter, who had taken over from Richie McCaw. To the middle row and Brad Thorne taking his place on the bench today. The combination is the veteran Ali Williams, relative youngster in Sam Whitelock. The feature of the loose trio, the return to action of Kieran Reid, his first Rugby World Cup game. And with McCall's withdrawal, Victor Vito gets to start on the open side flank. A milestone at halfback, Jimmy Cowan playing in his 50th Test match today. And with the injury to Dan Carter, there'll be particular interest in Colin Slade's effort at first five. In midfield, Sonny Bill Williams making just his fifth start in a Test match. And he has with him the 51 Test veteran Conrad Smith. And into the back three, and Mills Muliaina now just one Test match away from 100 while Zach Guilford gets his chance today, along with his great mate, Israel Dagg, who plays on the right wing. Well, a few changes in the All Black side that beat France uh, a number of days ago at Eden Park. Some players very keen to make a statement. Mills Muliaina, the form of Israel Dagg, really needs to show his attacking prowess, which we know he's got plenty of. Just been a bit quiet by his standards. Victor Vito in the seven jersey, a late call up for the injured Richie McCaw in the return, as you said, Grant, of Kieran Reid. A lot of interest there. So this side needs to continue with the statement they made against France with an emphatic performance against Canada this afternoon. There is Colin Slade practicing his uh, goal kicking. Our man sideline today is Ian Smith. Yes, Grant, uh, just to have a look at the toss here and uh, the result of which meant that the All Blacks will play from right to left as they run out right to left, which means they will be playing into the northerly breeze to begin with. So Canada, they want to use it well, they want to kick well, and if they can get quality position, position themselves into uh, positions of authority in the first 40. Difficult day for kickers, though. It's uh, certainly one that's going to test them. And uh, there's a man in the crowd, uh, all-white coach Ricky Herbert, who knows about coaching a side in the wind. I wonder about Kieran Crowley. He know Wellington wind as well. Yes, yeah, slightly different conditions from uh, yesterday when we were here for the France-Tonga game. No wind on that occasion, but just swirling a little today. Well, it is, the wind is from the north, but it won't. It doesn't make much difference in the stadium as we look in on the all-black dressing room. There, Andrew Hoare captain today with some final words and input from some senior players as well. They'll be looking to start this game well. So the ground filling up rapidly. Yeah, around about 35,000 in attendance once everyone is in place. There's a bit of support here for Canada. Just looking around, there's quite a bit of red and white. Lots of Canadian flags, lots of support for the All Blacks, of course, where a lot of New Zealand fans seem to just take to dressing up in black. I think it's a pretty standard part of people's wardrobes in New Zealand. They've got something black and they're putting it on. Yes, you can't help think that it's a very different crowd to what we had here yesterday with the Tongan fans. I think every single one of them bought a flag. This is perhaps a slightly more conservative audience, if you like. So the two teams assembling outside of their dressing rooms and we await the call of the Pukaya, which will welcome the two sides onto the stadium.
Court has been made, and the two teams now to emerge from the tunnel, and they'll be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd here in Wellington. Well, Coach Crowley has made just two changes to a starting lineup throughout the whole tournament. And today, just one change from Tuesday against Japan. It comes at fullback, where Matt Evans replaces the injured James Pritchard, and Evans' place on the wing goes to Connor Trainer. And a few changes from the team originally named by the All Blacks, notably no McCaw or Carter, with the latter now out of the tournament altogether. Carter's place taken by Colin Slade, McCaw's by Victor Vito, with Andrew Hoare taking over the captaincy. Also back today, Muliaina Guilford and Kieran Reid plays his first game of the entire tournament. Well, because of the coach's preference for starting the same team, not many of these Canadian players have seen 80 minutes. With an All Blacks bench today, that is four forwards and three backs split. Piri Wepu, the man that covers number 10. Two locks in there, Anthony Boric and Brad Thorne. Now standing by for the respective national anthems of New Zealand and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please be upstanding for the national anthems of Canada and New Zealand. Recorded by the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra and performed by the New Zealand Choral Federation Anthem Choir and the New Zealand Sign Language Sign Singers.
two rousing versions of the respective national anthems of Canada and New Zealand. And now the All Blacks to perform the traditional haka. The fifth time that Canada has faced the All Black Haka. Stand by, New Zealand against Canada. <laughs> Capacity crowd at the Wellington Regional Stadium. The All Blacks against Canada remain flat of France. Is the referee, Steve Walsh and Carlo Damasco as the kickoff is made and uh, claimed by the All Blacks, Jerome Kano, just out from his 22. Jimmy Cowan today in his 50th test match gets it away for Slade, and the All Blacks are going to run this out straight away. Here's Conrad Smith making good ground, so they're 15 away from halfway. Cowan again away for Slade. Now it's with Tony Woodcock in midfield, and Cowan once more, Slade as uh, Muliaina comes in from fullback. 99th test today for Mills Muliaina as they cross the halfway line. And again, Slade out into midfield. Williams did well to get rid of that. Now Sonny Bill Williams, that is, and charged. And immediately into the arms of Thunder Merva. And so Canada have the ball, five out from the 22, and they have a penalty as well. Well, now, the All Blacks going into this game, the only team that had never been behind at any point in their game, and they could lose that right here. Well, the All Blacks showing earlier they wanted to run the ball, and then for some reason Colin Slade decided he wanted to kick it, and that's where the error came, really, and gave Canada the chance to go to a breakdown and put pressure on that resulted in the penalty. So, All Blacks... Canada like engaging in the physical stuff and the tight exchanges, so the All Blacks will want to do their work up front, but will be quite happy to try and shift them around, shift Canada around the park. And Munro had to kick a big goal at McLean Park in Napier during the week to grab the draw against the Japanese team, and here he is, chance to put Canada in front in this match. And he's done it. So the Canadians have the lead by 3-0. That wind is favouring the Canadian kick-up, Ian Smith. Yes, it is. Uh, Grant, it's quite clearly in their, to their advantage at this point of time. I'll be interested to see what effect this swirling breeze has when the ball is hoisted. Uh, a couple of uh, All Black backs in particular might be a bit nervous after previous performances. Uh, and it might be a tactic that Canada apply early on if they get a chance. So Colin Slade with the restart, and that holds up nicely in the breeze, but it's uh, beautifully claimed by Jamie Cudmore, one of the more experienced players in this Canadian team. Ed Fairhurst, another one in his third Rugby World Cup, and claiming this is uh, Muriaina, slipped the first tackle, and uh, took it just inside Canada's territory. Now Williams, that's Ali Williams, getting shown the touchline, and up goes the flag. Now for our international audience, Grant Fox, we should just mention, because a lot of people around the world won't know that Dan's, Dan Carter's tournament is over. 
damage to groin yesterday. And uh, so Colin Slade playing in the number 10 jersey. And Canada have thrown it. There was no way in the world that was straight. And they've let it go. Goodness me. Anyway, that throw was made by Jason Marshall, who's a former quarterback in Canadian football. And he unleashed, but he didn't get it right. And now a good kick, a very good kick. And Canada putting some early pressure on, but how about the throw? Oh, that is an unbelievably poor decision by the officials. Oh, I did wonder if it was straight when it crossed the 15 metre line, whether it mattered, but it wasn't even straight when it crossed that, so I'm not sure what they were looking at. So the All Blacks get a defensive line out throw. Which Andrew Hoare makes. Now the All Blacks to run it out. Here's Kano. And he bounces a couple of players away. Good, strong bust by Jerome Kano. Back now for Slade. And didn't hit all that, all that well, but he's managed to get it into touch. Not his favourite boot, the left boot. Yeah, and the I guess he'll be a little bit on edge too. He might be, but at the end of the day, he has got the jersey at the moment. He's got the opportunity. And once he settles, he'll be able to show his skills. He is a talented young man. And he is charged with steering the All Black ship around the park this afternoon. Now, a more conventional throw. It's with the captain and hooker, Pat Reardon. Previous throw was Jason Marshall. And Canada win it nicely. Away it goes for Fairhurst. Uh, taken up strongly by Ryan Smith, who's now played over 50 test matches for Canada. And they bring it up through Matt Evans, the fullback. And they're pretty much in a group here, Canada. They're not going to be very expansive, one wouldn't imagine. And now Fairhurst. Good start here by the Canadians. Munro gets it across to Smith. He gets buried right on the 10-metre line. And Fairhurst is back there again and stabbing this towards the line, but it's easily claimed by Muliaina. Didn't really need to take the mark, and he's got a lovely spiralling punt away. Evans again. And he's got time to make his clearing kick. And that's a, that's a good net gain for the All Blacks. Moliona wasting no time at all. And he saw that the Canadian defence was up a bit flatter. He rifled it in behind. Gained about 30 metres for his team. And they have the line-out throw. Short line-out they've gone to as well. Kano standing out of midfield. And easily taken down by Ali Williams. Controlled in the back by Vito. Now Cowan. Oh, that's forward. Got it away to Sonny Bill Williams. Bit lucky to get away with that, though, as uh, the All Blacks threw Kieran Reid, making a welcome return to the starting lineup today. Here's Ali Williams again, taken down in a good tackle by Ryan Smith. Now Cowan clears it out. Slade! Clean break by Slade. Now can he link up a long pass to Guilford? probably got there they'll have to check it well Colin Slade a good break, a good pass yes. and has it finished with Gilbert second question yep. so is there a reason I cannot award the try well that's only if he went out so let's have a quick look watch his left foot We just need another angle. That looks okay. This angle will tell us. Just left ankle. Does it kick up? It's not across the line there. Where is it? No, it stays in. I think that's going to be a try. Roman, there is no reason you may want to try. I want to try. Yes. Oh, that is a great try. Must admit, it came off a forward pass to Sonny Bill Williams. And maybe that makes up for the poor, the crooked line out throw. These things have a habit of even, evening themselves out sometimes. Some good work to the right, then Slade broke and threw. And absolutely, there it is there. Well, on second look, maybe it was just a flat ball. But here's Slade on the break with options running, carrying the ball in two hands. And this is a great pass to Guilford, who just pinned his ears back. Didn't try and come in and got there in the end. Immensely strong work here from uh, Zach Guilford. Grant Nisbet to uh, school of carrying the ball might not uh, agree so much there. Might yeah, have thought. Wrong hand, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, uh, Grant Nisbet will be very happy, as the whole of New Zealand will be uh, to see Colin Slade making an early, 
early uh, inroads with a running game. Good sign. First conversion. And what a kick that is. That's a beauty too. Well, maybe the confidence has uh, come through fairly early. You can just hear New Zealand breathing a bit easier. Great break, great kick. Third try in his eighth test to Zach Guilford. And it's Slade here. Beautifully weighted ball, which Guilford ran right onto. So the kickoff is made and claimed once more by Kano. Seven points to three. The All Blacks leading. Just under eight minutes play in the first half. Here's Vito in midfield wearing the number seven jersey for the first time for the All Blacks. Cowan across to Smith. Room for Guilford again. Just couldn't make the connection with Slade. Accidental offside. Six in front. And uh, Accidental offside. A knock on. Well, it was a good Black sight to Blackboard. see Victor Vito carrying the ball so strongly because there's one thing he needs to do more of is have more aggression. It's a big, slow, big slow man, balance. good speed, great skills, very intelligent balance. man. Just needs to get a bit angrier sometimes carrying the ball, and we saw it then. Well, the All Blacks have uh, got a big back line out to wide. We've got uh, Guilford floating in Crunch. around uh, behind Sonny Bill Williams. So an opportunity here with quick ball for something Touch. planned. Pause. Engage. Reed. Off it goes to Cowan. Now Slade drops it off to Smith. Nice pass away to Sonny Bill Williams striding. Get out of my road, he says, as he pushes his man away. Now Vito, loose pass. And uh, the Canadians try to hack it ahead. It's with Kano. And now it's with Andrew Hoare, the skipper. Guilford gets it wide for Reed. And the All Blacks right in centre field. Referee's got the arm up. And so uh, the Canadians were offside. Now here is Conrad Smith. Just couldn't get it away. And it is forward and a scrum Canada's ball and a couple of the Canadians very slow to get to their feet here. And the All Blacks making advantage line easily and the drop off pass on the inside. Great Sonny Bill-esque backhand pass from Conrad Smith and I think Sonny Bill Williams needed to look out to his right because that's where the support was. And Conrad Smith just losing the ball as he tried to offload on the inside to Victor Vito. Well, what Canada are going to feel uh, is the pace of this game as it wears on because uh, whilst they've had very honest and creditable performances in previous pool matches, this is taking it up another level against the side. Wants to make a statement going into the playoff side of things. So Canada uh, is going to uh, have to do it, have a lot of stoppages. They're going to be taking some direct, very deep breaths and uh, trying to slow things down as much as possible sure as time goes on. Go. Well, I hope the referee gets on to that if they're doing it deliberately Ian Smith so this game can flow so this is only the second scrum of the match All Blacks had the feed the first time stable for them what can they do on Canada's ball they get it in very quickly as the big weight comes on and it's all over the place it's been snapped up by Reed to Vito and Victor Vito scores, and that's his first test try. Oh, big All Black scrum. This took a little while for the weight to come. Solid enough initially for Canada, but then the weight came for the All Blacks. Almost a second shove scenario. Canada lost control of it. Here we are from Spider Cam. You just see, there it goes. And round it went, came through for Kieran Reid to control to Vito, who just powered over. Yes, through the tackle of uh, numbers 9 and 10, who are always going to struggle against uh, the Wellingtonian. Terrifically strong, 9 and 12, in fact, it was terrifically strong pick up there. But the All Blacks will be very pleased. First, the, the set piece back in their own side of halfway, which came off and gave them that field position. And then again from another set piece, albeit on... Uh, a Canadian put in that they're able to inflict that much pressure and that much damage so things ticking over nicely Slade second kick this time is away so two tries the second scored by Victor Vito and one conversion 12 points to three 
The All Blacks lead and just 12 minutes gone. Well, they're dressed up against the elements uh, today, but it seems to be holding up all right as Munro makes the kickoff. Claimed by Cowan, oh, almost a hospital pass to Kano, but he brushes past Aaron Carpenter and sets it. And now Cowan is going to kick and uh, drifting towards the touchline. Well, the number six for New Zealand has had a terrific season, really. Some of his work is often overshadowed, but once again, you see there the strength of Jerome Kano in a situation which was a bit awkward. So Canada have gone short here. Five men in. Reared into throw. And nicely done by the All Blacks. Tap back. So Cowan from the turnover ball. Vito can't quite escape from the tackle of Ryan Smith. Cowan goes wide this time. Kano in a bit of space. Good charge by the big number six, almost to the halfway line. Looking for quick recycle. Cowan away for Slade. Now Sonny Bill Williams to Smith. Muriaina. Gilford to chase onto it. Slightly overweighted the kick though. And it's cleared away, but it's not out. It's fielded by Dag, Israel Dag, who's come from the right wing. And he sends it wide for Reed. Kieran Reed, up. Misunderstanding, but tidied up by Kano. He's got through a power of work already, Jerome Kano. Four plays half back. The Canadians are a mile offside. And the back they come. Well, they want to finish it anyway. All Blacks, we haven't heard the whistle either. Well, there's two little All games here. Red. They're, still, they're still playing on. Oh, uh, now we've realised it. Such a din in the stadium that they didn't hear the whistle. Uh, this wasn't even close to being onside. Your own Kano, he's carried strongly on about three or four occasions now. Pushing people off. Decision, captain. Shot. Shot. Oh dear, oh dear. That's about the worst offside I've seen in the tournament so far, I think. Well, well it's just a reflection, isn't it, of the pressure that uh, Canada Canada are on the defensively. They have to make look at making spot tackles and disrupt the flow of the All Blacks, but that uh, was carrying it just. Uh, five or six yards too far so another kick and each one of these becomes Grant Fox very important for Colin Slade not so much for the scoreboard today but for later on just for confidence and look unfortunately he's got one of the more difficult stadiums in the country to kick in when there's a bit of wind about because not that it necessarily favours you at this level i.e. at ground level but because it swirls wind straight up or straight down or across is not so bad swirling winds are difficult to deal with well, standing right behind him is the All Black kicking coach, Mick Byrne, who was with Japan earlier, and he'll be happy enough with that as the penalty is landed, 15 points to three. Just interesting before when the All Blacks ran it out, the Guilford called for Mulioina to put the ball on the ground, and I think the All Blacks are going to be better off if they carry the ball deep. Commit defenders look to change angles rather than put the ball on the on the ground behind the defence too often. So the kickoff is made once again, and uh, this time it's Whitelock who receives it. Push back, push back seven, push. Cowan to Slade. Here's Vito again. Slade gets it back, bounces it for Smith, and Conrad Smith has to set it a couple of metres out from the 22 there. Cowan. For Slade, that's a, not a great pass, and uh, no wonder it was knocked on. It was Ali Williams. So an opportunity here for Canada as the ball comes loose. Come back forward. Scrum. Well, it was a Rugby. sloppy pass. Uh, and Colin Slade's putting his hand up, apologising. Just some of the work around those loops. It's not sharp enough, in my view. He just slipped out of his hand there. You saw him look down straight away. 
Just that wraparound stuff in the middle. And just those transfers. There needs to be a little bit more sharpness about it. They're just a little bit easy to read from a defensive point of view. A good attacking option here for Canada, but the key will be whether they can deliver a solid enough platform at scrum time. Touch! Pause! Engage! Fairhurst. Now here's Carpenter off the back. Oh, good run by Aaron Carpenter. And now the Canadians with Hubert Bidens, who just loves to run with the ball, the big prop forward. Now they go wide for Munro. Slots it through, but he's weighted it too heavily. And that's easily defended. Yeah, easily read okay. by Israel Dag, and all a little bit predictable, big, really. Very obvious from Munro that the ball is going on the ground and behind. If you don't move, it can't get you. If you don't move, it can't get you. So Colin Slade at 15 points to three. And that holds up nicely again. And controlled by the skipper. Back for Cowan. And uh, Jimmy Cowan just waiting for the referee to blow for the scrum. And knock on scrum black. So Jimmy Cowan really not keen to play that one. I think he had an opportunity. He was quite happy to take the scrum. And so the all-black platform so far really solid in this phase of the game. There's the territory. Canada have lots of it, but possession in favour of the All Blacks, and it doesn't matter where they are on the field at the moment, the All Blacks are looking to attack Rich. ball in hand and look for them to do that again right here. Okay. Reed channels it away, now Count. Slade driving it in behind left winger Phil McKenzie, all the way back to Matt Evans who is a winger as well, Evans. And his clearance is not out. So the All Blacks will launch from inside the road half as Cowan has a go. Now off it goes to Slade. Inside pass to Guilford. Well covered. Good tackle on him by Kleberger. Now Cowan getting there. Ball available for Smith. Hands it off to Guilford, who stayed in close. He's got a hard work rate, Zach Guilford. Smith again. Now Slade for Sonny Bill Williams. Here's a Aina. Reed. Ridden down at a good tackle by Ryan Smith. Cleared away by Franks. All Blacks moving it left to right. Veto. Now Smith again. That's Conrad Smith. Here is Dag. Guilford. Guilford with pace. Dag! Two Hawks Bay boys combine for Israel Dag to score. Oh, just too much advantage line stuff for the All Blacks. Ball too quick and too much width with the attack. Canada cannot handle them at the moment. Well, Zach Guilford, who featured in that movement three times carrying the ball, all off his left wing on the right-hand side of the park. And here it is, Guilford brilliantly drew in Phil McKenzie and gave it to Israel Dag to finish off. Yeah, Van der Merwe involved in the tackle as well, and perhaps McKenzie is the villain here from Canada's point of view. Looked like Van der Merwe may well have had uh, Guilford covered down low. Just there, I think he had him. And uh, he just left uh, Israel Dag with way too much space for a finisher of that class. So, yeah, side to side stuff from the All Blacks, but it's not lateral stuff. There's some very direct running. Kieran Reid on the left, Guilford on the right, and the five-pointer, which uh, they could well get an extra two for, but a difficult kick again for Colin Slade. Can't bring it back in time. I saw that from the uh, conversion he missed before where it was left. That time he aimed further right. The ball did come around, but not far enough. So here it is. Dag gave it to him and then looped him. And you're right, Ian Smith. McKenzie did not need to come in. Munro again. Whitelock goes chasing after it. And back it comes again for Jimmy Cowan. 21 minutes gone. Slade again off to Vito. Another strong run by Victor Vito. 
Cowan clears off to Conrad Smith. Chasing after this is Munro. And none of the All Blacks really chasing up on this. Plenty of time for Matt Evans. And that's a clever little kick if he gets the bounce, but instead it goes to Dag, who put it on the ground, he thought. He released forward, it's a knock-on. it was propelled forward, according to Monsieur Platt. Israel Dag doesn't agree, but not a good chasing line in the middle there from the odds. We just look in a bit closer. Yeah, I think that decision's right. No problem with that. Clearly went forward. Not how Dag sees it. But uh, the chasing line in the middle wasn't good. I know the attack came up the left flank from the All Blacks, but got to fill that defensive chasing line across the park, and the All Blacks didn't do it very well on that occasion. Touch! Pause! Again! Fairhurst again gets it in very, very quickly. Now Munro. Turns it back to Funder Merva. He really is the go-to man in this Canadian backline. Big and powerful. Fairhurst for Munro. In fact, it's uh, O'Toole. Chauncey O'Toole. Crunching tackle made on him. It's there again, though. Kleeberger. This time it's Ryan Smith. Fairhurst gets it back. Reed did that pretty well, but now the Canadians have got it away wide, and that's a good bust from a number eight Carpenter. Into all black territory they go. So Fairhurst away for Munro. Plenty of backs here. This is McKenzie in from the left wing. Scored a super try against the Japanese. Now Smith off to his fullback Evans. Fairhurst taken up by Bidens All Blacks looking to turn it over and they surely have Cowan makes the kick now Guilford's got plenty of pace Cowan as well and it has to be taken back Guilford's going to score the value of following up and Zach Guilford gets his second Oh, Andrew Hall started this with a turnover. We know it's a very strong part of his game. But he was the one that seized it at the breakdown. And it went to Conrad Smith and Cowan, who sensed the defensive line was very flat. And he just kicked it in behind. And watch Guilford here. This is a very strong part of his game, the chase. And, yeah, a very... Connor trainer didn't do very well at all, but no, the poor, beauty of the chase. Yeah, poor defence, uh, actually, he should have done a, look, a good deal better. But uh, if we go back and have a look at how much of a head start he got on Zach Guilford, there is no no substitute for real speed, particularly out wide. And Zach Guilford gave Connor trainer a 20 metre head start as well as everyone else in the race. And in the end, because of his persistence and that extra gas, he profited. Well, he's got a couple of tries, Zach Guilford. So he's doubled his tally in Test Rugby in the space of 25 minutes. And yeah, that one stays away. So two tries to Zach Guilford of the four scored by the All Blacks so far. 25 points to three. Yeah, Guilford will chase kicks all day. He is a persistent sort of character. Builds a lot of his game around that sort of thing. Now he's back in the action here, and uh, Canada caught the All Blacks napping a wee bit. Accidental offside. And there was a knock on in the end. Unorthodox in kick. We've seen one or two kick. of these little ploys from the Canadians, including the long throw. Now, Guilford attacked the ball a bit hard there. He needed to be a bit more patient coming forward. Boy, you're going to struggle to catch the ball when you don't bend at your knees going forward at that rate of knots. Crutch! Touch! Pause! Engage! Wait, plenty of it. 
And it's a tight hit in the old terms. Here's Guilford on the left-hand side again, fed by Reed, trying to get into the touchline. Fed away by Cowan into midfield. A loose pass from Williams, that's Ali Williams. Now snapped up by McKenzie. Here's big lock forward Jeff Sinclair. Thunder Merva got it back too. Did really well to keep it in. Now's the captain, Pat Reardon. They would just love to get a try against the All Blacks. Fairhurst swings it wide to Marshall. Now Cudmore goes to ground right out in front of the goalposts. And Munro, and he knocked it on. So did Red, the All Blacks. Scrum black ball. And a double knock on means scrum or black ball. Yeah, very nearly for Canada. Made good. An All Black mistake. And Canada have worked out carrying in the middle very easily. Okay, they are we, flying we from the outside in. So the All Blacks yeah, need to adjust their attack. They need to roll the ball. Okay. Second man play, it's sometimes called roll the ball behind. <laughs> that forward in the middle and hit a guy deeper and that'll lock the Canadian defence in and the All Blacks will profit more wide it's a double knock on there Munro not happy with himself Crunch. and Mulligan is at first receiver on the right Sunnyville Williams Crunch. next to him Reed to detach but nicely read by Fairhurst he cut off the ability to move the ball. Line offside. Yeah, too but, well. <laughs> yeah, too well, that's right. And away goes Cowan with a quick throw. Here is Slade. Back to Guilford. Here they come again, lining up here. Muli Aina, he'll run all the way. And the veteran gets try number five. Oh, great awareness. Jimmy Cowan, nice comeback, Mills, Milioina. 34th test try for him and his 99th test match. No one to be more deserving, been a great servant for New Zealand rugby, but Jimmy Cowan always looking for the quick tap. Colin Slade did well, he carried to the defence. Guilford read it well, dropped on the inside, and with his speed, he was always lining Milioina up. All Blacks just playing with too much speed for Canada. Well, Ed Fairhurst, the uh, Canadian hook, uh, half-back or scrum half, he'll be the one that uh, has uh, feeling the most guilty behind the line because he was the one who was offside, which uh, created the opportunity for the All Blacks for the quick kick, and he was the second tackler in on a player coming inside that he didn't need to commit to, and that was presenting the gap for Zach Guilford. And then Muli Aina, test match number 99, another try, and uh, he goes straight to Zach Guilford and says, thank you, son. Giving the old man one. Appreciate it. So five tries now for the All Blacks in half an hour's play. Colin Slade successful with just one conversion. Make that two now. As he judges it nicely to take it up to 32 points to three. You know, his strike rate right now is not so flash, but what I like about what he's doing is he's making adjustments on the wind he's seeing. So the previous kick missed to the right, the wind was pushing it right. That time, he just held it to the left. You saw it push right later on. So he is making those adjustments as he goes. Munro kicks off again. And uh, very close to the touchline. The All Blacks have kept it in, though. So here's Cowan looking for the long, flat pass. Beautiful hands from Vito. Awkward. It was dipping at his ankles as Cowan this time serves it up to Muli Aina. And that's forward. And the Canadians will be very happy that it was forward as Sonny Bill was away. And finally picks something up that's been forward or not straight. It's taken the referee a while to do that. Thanks. Van der Merwe here, Smithy, I think, got hit by Victor Vito. Well, uh, he's been their best back in terms of ball in hand. He's a terrific runner, very strong upper body and takes some tackling, but uh, he has uh, picked up an ankle injury. He's got a heavily strapped calf, hasn't he? Yeah, not good at all. So uh, he's going to go just fend it off there with ease uh, by Victor Vito. What skill players have these days close to the touchline? The ability to keep the ball in. Scrum red ball. Forward pass. Israel Dag on that occasion, but some really good signs for the All Blacks, obviously, as you would expect. Crutch! Imagine the coaches uh, are pretty happy there. The old thing, Grant Touch. Fox, which has uh, not been so pure. Maybe trying to do too much at certain times, but by and large, very happy. No, another big 
uh, a scrum as Carpenter was able to bring it away for the Canadians. And off goes uh, Munro. Players coming from everywhere, including Evans, the fullback. Now it's away for McKenzie. And uh, Phil McKenzie, trying to stay in the field of play, has done so. Lays it back for Fairhurst. And uh, Canada trying to stretch the All Blacks wide. Here's Jason Marshall, the big tight head prop. Now it's the loose head prop, which is Biden's. Five metres away for Fairhurst. Now, Munro. Oh, ball left behind by Traynor. Still live, though, Evans. Here, once again, is McKenzie. Good control, Rockford, and the All Blacks penalised. And looking to the take it quickly there, there Fairhurst, but... Rockford. Using hand. Back to the mark we come. Fortune. Well, pretty good period of play by Canada. They've clearly come with an attitude to give the ball some air as well. And All Black defence out wide is having to work pretty hard. Not making the best decisions at times at the moment, the All Blacks, but got to give Canada some credit for causing that. You see, they just, I know that's their pattern to leave the last man free, but. This, Need to perhaps be a bit better at drifting on the inside. And that is against Israel Dag. Trying desperately hard to look innocent. It's a wobbly Canadian lineup, and it's been lost forward by the All Blacks. No, the All Blacks won't mind scrum time, of course. They've been very dominant. Interesting that they attack that line out defensively rather than stay on the ground and try and repel the inevitable. Rolling mall. Canada are trying to put the ball in Fairhurst very quickly into the scrum to negate the All Blacks shove. No, not successful so far, but he'll keep trying. Great attacking position here, but oh gee. That's another huge scrum and the All Blacks have got out of it by just driving through that Canadian scrum. And uh, Tony Woodcock, <laughs> he'll be pretty happy with that work, I think. No, we'll do that again. Don't move forward, stay on him. Boy, this was some scrum. Yeah, just watch Woodcock here. Oh, boy, he went up real early. Did Jason Marshall. Line out throw has been won by Vito at the back. So Cowan sweeps it away. Now Sonny Bill Williams finds another big gap. Looking to link up, and he's made a clever kick here. Muli Aina away for Guilford. Guilford's off. They won't catch him. That's three. Boy, that was a clever kick by Sonny Bill. Well, I did wonder for a minute what he was doing, but it went more sideways than forward, but started with a stolen line out off Canada by Victor Vito. The long throw not finding its target. And just quick ball. Got it, two passes into Sonny Bill Williams' hands and off the left foot, bang and through. Call on the outside. The kick pass, more or less, that's almost what it was. And Zach Guilford just coming back against the tie, number three for him. Well, 51st test match for Ryan Smith, uh, the Canadian number 12 here, but just stood up all over the place here by Sonny Bill Williams. He went inside him, and that was uh, in the end a brilliantly weighted kick for Muli Aina. A couple of uh, defenders trying to take him out, which meant Guilford had to prop off the left foot. He could do that and then uh, accelerate almost from a standing start. So for Zach Guilford, who probably 10 days ago or so thought that his tournament might have been over, can't keep him out of this game. No, he's certainly making it hay while the sun shines. This is from the sideline, and it's just caught towards the end of its flight. Unconverted, 37-3, to 3 and about four minutes remaining, first half. Oh, there it is. Bang and acceleration in behind the defensive line really quickly indeed. Sits up nicely for Moloyena. Back against the tide for Guilford. Too hard for the defence. 
All Blacks uncertain under the high ball there. And the flag is up. So there will be a line out. And communication breakdown there with that kickoff. Now just drifting on the wind. And that's sort of the way the wind's going. Just went away from Ali Williams. There's Cowan on the line. All Blacks got to be careful here. They don't loosen up too much. Got to keep in, in their structures. Canadians go short as we close in on half time here. All Blacks have had most of the ball. Well, in fact, territory. Most of the game has been played in All Black territory. The tries have been breakout tries. Now, Canada looking to get something going as Hubert Bidens carries it forward. Now, Fairhurst works it away for Munro. Here's Evans, the fullback in. Down he goes. Conrad Smith made sure of that. Number 21 is the replacement player, Sean White. Came on for Thunder Merva. Six, and right. a penalty against Jerome Kano I don't need here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Kano pinned in there. Really. Sorry. One of those ones where he got in the wrong position early and then there was no way he could move. But you get penalised for that anyway. So Munro will look for the touchline. So just watch, there's Kano. Tries to roll his guy. Yeah, you there, it's pretty hard to move, isn't it? Any, any early jump. Not before the throw, don't jump before. Seven, Pat Reardon. And that's a nice throw. And here's a real opportunity. Your oh, Carpenter got it away. And that really had opened up for Hubert Bidens. But the opportunity is still here for Canada. Now Marshall wants to get his hands on it. Driving low and hard. Shows the base of the uprights by the padding. That's OK. And they're edging towards the line, but the ball is up. And it's going to be a five-metre scrum. There's an all-black down, and he's slowly getting up, Owen Franks. Well, the all-blacks will be very keen to keep a clean sheet if they can today. Hey, hey. So, Canada, they love the forward exchanges. They do it pretty well. A lot of the sides at this tournament who are the developing style nations are very adept at this sort of close-quarter combat type stuff. The all-blacks, for their part, won't mind going to a scrum, of course because they've been absolutely hammering the Canadian scrum. Crunch! Touch! Pause! Engage! Into the last minute we come of this first half. And Canada have certainly created opportunities. Oh, Kieran Crowley is a very creative rugby coach, and yes, they've got some very nifty little set plays. That one off Crunch. the back of the line out, executed better, may well have resulted in a try. Touch, pause, engage. This time, Fairhurst doesn't get it in quite so smartly, but Cowper de detaches, runs into Reed, but they're very close again. Now, wide it goes, Fairhurst, real chance here. Scored. Well, they have had the much better of territory, and at times they've looked quite good on attack, but mistakes have been costly for them. This time there was no mistake. The All Black scrum couldn't quite follow through. Canada were able to clear the ball and actually get to the advantage line. And that was the key in behind there, and that group of All Black forwards who would defend on the blind side couldn't regroup quickly enough. Just a numbers game in the end for Canada. Well done. No, really. Very, very good try. Just simple stuff. Draw and pass. Pass. Just use your numbers advantage. So 
Uh, this will be the last act of the first half as Munro pulls it away to the left. So it's an unconverted try. But uh, the All Blacks in the first half, six tries to one. And it's 37 to 8. Well, it's been an absolutely dominant first half by the All Blacks. Their scrum has been a powerful weapon, but their tries have all come from deep. They've punished Canada for their uh, the odd error. But when the All Blacks have spread the ball wide, they've looked good indeed. The pace of the game, their ability to carry across the vantage line, just too much for Canada to cope with. But well done, Canada. They have a positive attitude, and right on half time, they got some reward. 37 points to eight, half time in Wellington. <laughs> 45 points scored in the first half here in Wellington, most of them by the All Blacks. Six tries to one with Zach Guilford, a hat trick in the first half. And a nice try right on half time by Connor Trainer for the Canadians. So 37 points to eight. Difficult day for the goal kickers. Colin Slade with just two conversions from six and a penalty goal so far. Well, very quiet dressing room for Canada. The chat being done. Their territories in their favour possession is two. Had to make a lot of tackles. They've missed a lot too. One of the big problems with them is they're giving the advantage line away too easily to the All Blacks, and I'm sure that's something that the coaching staff will be trying to address at half time. Well, I look now at the highlights, and they've been fairly uh, plenty of them. The first one after a clean break by Colin Slade, and then a beautiful pass. Yeah, great pass with width and the wind, not easy. Guilford finished yes. off nicely. So that was the first of the tries. Then the All Black scrum, totally dominant. And watch Kieran Reid snap it up. Quick pass to Victor Vito. And he gets his first test try. And uh, the All Blacks just kept them coming. Yeah, width on the ball here. So lock the Canadian defence in close. A wrap around by Dag on Guildford, who drew two defenders in. Finished off nicely by Dag. Zach Guildford had one. And he's going to get another one here. There's a nifty little kick, but not great defending here by the Canadians. It was uh, Connor Trainer who couldn't control it. Guilford got his second. And here's the, the next try. The Guilford lines Molina. Quick tap by Jimmy Cowan. And Guilford in space lines Molina up for a try in his 99th test. The All Blacks ran this one out. A beautiful kicker from Sonny Bill Williams. He has a quick look across, and then a lovely kick, which sits up for Muliaina. And then Guilford, once he saw clear space between him and the try line, he was off. He got uh, three, but then right on half-time, Canada got a try. Yeah, Connor trying a good, stable enough scrum by Canada. The All Blacks couldn't regroup on the blind side defensively. Numbers advantage, which Canada exploited well. So 37 points to eight. At half time, the All Blacks over Canada. <laughs> half time break here at the Wellington Regional Stadium. 37 points to eight. The All Blacks leading. Canadian coach, former All Black Kieran Crowley, is with Ian Smith. Well, Kieran, a nice positive note to finish the first half. What have you, you told your boys? Um, yeah, we've got to get our defence structure right. You know, we're just leaking too much. Um, the inside channel has beaten us a couple of times. Um, you know, the pass back in. We're a little bit like deer in bloody headlights at the moment. It's, you know, it's, um, yeah, we, we're, uh, you know, we've got to get the ball and have a little bit of composure about how we do things. And uh, a couple of times, you know, we've held on to it. It hasn't been too bad, but then we just give it back to them. It just seems that the closer you can keep it, Aside from the scrum, which is having a few problems, the better it is. They're, they're so much trouble from deep. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that's one thing that we've said. You know, we've got to either kick the body thing out or, or contest for it. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens this half. Good on you, thanks, mate. Cheers, Cheers mate. Well, one thing that Canada did have plenty of in the first half was territory. 76% of it. Um, you could argue they had the wind. So it'll be interesting to see whether the All Blacks can turn that around in the second half. 
Yeah, I think the message for the All Black coaching staff at half time will be no loosen up too much, guys. You know, like what you've done. Not happy conceding a try, but just make sure you keep the simple patterns of our game plan together. Don't get too loose. Don't look too many changes. We'll check that with Ian Smith when he uh, gets settled. And Romain Poit gets this second half underway at the Wellington Regional Stadium. Kickoff claimed by Aaron Carpenter for Canada. Fairhurst swings it wide. And a kick under some duress is made. Muli Aina knocked it on as he came sliding in to grab it. Red board. Oh, no changes uh, as yet to the sides that left the field, bearing Come in mind, of course, please, that guys. they did lose Van der Merwe, uh, the Canadians, uh, towards the latter stages of the second half, and Sean White was on in 21. The interesting for me, Grant Fox, just to see the involvement of Pretty Wepu in the second half as well. At what point? Yeah, the All Blacks tend to change their halfback at around the sort of 55 or 60 minute mark. So we'll watch for that. Or will he go to the number 10 position? Well, he's covered for 10, isn't he, in the makeup of this side with Alice at night covering nine. A little bit of light rain falling here, too. Driving in as uh, the kick is made by Matt Evans. Oh, he's well and truly overdone that. That's gone a couple of metres over the sideline from Matt Evans. And so the All Blacks have. A line out way down near the 22 metre line. Yeah, what would be best in my view for the All Blacks? There's Pity Wepu there. If the All Blacks think Slade is the guy who is going to carry on in the number 10 position, then I'd love to sit, have him see the 80 minutes out. Poor throws, white lock stretches, and now Cowan waits. Oh, a lob pass, not a very good one either. And all Canadians onto this, and they've got an opportunity. Can Trainor get a second one? He's leading the charge. And did he get it down? He wants to have a look, but the Canadians are celebrating. The second question. No complaint from Mills Muliaina. He was the last defender standing right over the top of it. Uh, I think you're dead right, Ian Smith. No problem here at all for Trainer. Yep, absolutely no problem. And that was from a shocking Remember, pass there is no reason from you Jimmy Cowan. The try. No reason I award the try. Then. Yes. Time on. Well, Canada strike first. Well, so, no Canadian player has ever scored. 10 points in a match against the All Blacks, so Connor Trainer is going to remember this one. Oh, Andrew Hall, All Black captain, I'm sure he gave his side a bit of a rack up. Not the start they were looking for, but just the start Canada would have wanted. And a Munro, who kicked an early penalty to give Canada the lead, looking to convert, and he's done it well. Munro converts the trainer try, 37 points to 15. So, yeah, that pass went right over the head of Guildford and Colin Slade. Too much speed by trainer. Slade kicks off, just a short one too, and well taken by Chauncey O'Toole. For the Canadians, Fairhurst, Munro slipped it away to Fairhurst again, and he is well and truly held. Two tries now, Canada. Another little kick attempted to go in behind Dag Fielding. Mully Aina, good depth in this attack, as Slade sends it off to Guilford. Met head on by Ryan Smith and Cowan. Again, a high one for Slade. Now Kano. Here's Williams looking to offload. That's so beautifully to Conrad Smith. And Jimmy Cowan should get in under the bar. Oh, 
Well, he'll be happy, Jimmy Cowan, in his 50th test to get his seventh try in test matches. It makes up for the one he essentially gave to Canada on his own. This pass was a bit high too, pulled in by Slade. Watch Sonny Bill Williams here, carrying a one and drew two defenders in. Great line, Conrad Smith, back on the angle. And he ran Cowan in, who just had enough speed to get there. Well, had uh, amazing numbers, the All Black, on that back line, back line move because they had Conrad Smith coming in from deep and wide. And they had Israel Dagg outside him, so they had so many options that Canada had to defend. And that's where the All Blacks have been dangerous from, from deep. It was a poor kick from uh, the first 5-8. Munro just gifted it to Dag. There's the conversion for uh, the All Blacks as well. Just what Kieran Crowley didn't want, conceding possession in a soft way. Well, what the All Blacks would have wanted, though, Ian, is to hit back straight away. And as far as they're concerned, they won't want to concede any more points at all to Canada. One would be too many in their book. They've now given away two. But Canada, naturally enough, they'll be happy. Munro kicks off. Whitelock gets under it, or off the shoulder. And so the All Blacks make a hash of that. Fairhurst away for Smith. This time Munro running outside Smith. Good tackle by Conrad Smith. And Canada still in possession. Fairhurst using this wide wipers kick quite regularly and Carpenter fielded quickly. And there's a forward pass in there. And forward thrown Spend by Captain board. Pat Reardon. So just have a look at here's the pass by Jimmy Cowan that went way over Guilford's head down in front of Slade and behind him and away Connor trainer went. What's up, Corps? Yes. A couple of mistakes early Crunch. from the All Blacks. Coaching staff won't be happy with that. Reed holding, now Cowan off for Slade. Hovering in there was Dag. Lays it back. Cowan. Well, again, it's a dreadful pass. Might have had his hand hit as he delivered that. In fact, he's very slow to get back. And well, that's in fact Israel Dan, I think, who's struggling a bit. All Black throwing some really loose passes here. Jimmy Cowan standing up too quickly. The that's not the, the sight the All Black coaching staff will want to see Israel Dag limping I'm betting he gets dragged pretty quickly this with the All Black Dr Deb Robinson at the moment I say Toyava is in the reserves today they won't be wanting to take too many risks and looks like a change coming for Canada anyway they're going to change at hooker Canada so uh, Ryan Hamilton uh, is on for the skipper Pat Red, and this is a move they've done before in the World Cup. And the All Blacks, as you say, wasting no time. Dag is gone. Till we are on in 22. Very quick change. They realise how valuable Israel Dag will be as this tournament progresses. Another loose pass. It's been a bad five minutes for passing as Conrad Smith takes it. Now it's snapped up by Reed. And the All Blacks in Canada's territory. Here's the skipper, Andrew Hoare. There's nothing through the middle. Now, Cowan wants it. Muli Aina. Here's Tawiava getting an early touch. Finding Muli Aina with a nice offload. Players lining up, but he had to hang on to it as they overran him. Now Slade into midfield for Vito. Here is Williams, that sunny bill. In centre field. Now Slade back on the inside for Vito, who's got through plenty of work in this game. Ball turned over, though. And away comes uh, Hubert Bidens for the Canadians. Off it goes to Phil McKenzie. Fairhurst. Munro. Across to the try scorer Trainer. And the ball lost, and so Vito tidies up. He'll play advantage here, referee Plight. Conrad Smith for Slade and Reed. 
referee got the arm out here. There's Slade, clean break from Slade, but the ball drops loose and a tackle from McKenzie. Forward breakfast, right afterwards. From red board. Danger here for the All Blacks is getting loose, and that leads to mistakes as perhaps the All Blacks are looking to inject more players into the game, Ian Smith. Well, they're looking to get Tori Wepu on, and uh, Rudis are also looking to get uh, Anthony Boric on as well. So just have a look at Israel Dag landing on that, that troublesome right hip area. It was uh, like a big dead leg that uh, was the problem after the game against France. Colin Slade might be just uh, limping a tad as well, so that is the, the most scary factor for the All Blacks, bearing in mind the last 24 hours, just if they can get through, play some polished rugby but unscathed. Well, Andrew Hoare leading the All Blacks today. He's the 65th test captain for the All Blacks. And uh, one or two notables have only ever captained the All Blacks in one test match. Just a couple that spring to mind, Chris Laidlaw and Kel Tremaine. In fact, there are 10 players who were one test captains. So Andrew Hoare joining that list today, 65th test captain. Touch! Pause! And game! As Ed Fairhurst rolls it in, the All Black scrum, which was dominant in the first half. They've got it again as Reed sends it off to Vito. That was a try scoring move in the first half. Now Cowan away for Slade. Williams can't hang on. Mistakes really plaguing this All Black Combat. performance in the second Some half. And they've only been going 10 minutes. Yeah, that's about being mentally right. And the game is so easily in the bank at half time. This can happen, but sides who are mentally tough enough get through this. And Sonny Bill Williams changed angle. The ball hit his chest. Just watch where he carries his hands here. You see elbows in at the side rather than away from his body. So Lever's not out far enough to make the catch a little bit easier. Coughed it up. Touch. Pause. Again. Fairhurst again. Carpenter. Cowan gets there quickly. He's been knocked on by Carpenter. And so it'll be an all-black scrum. It wasn't. Get them up. Just forward. So, no group of three. They'll be happy but frustrated at the same time and frustrated with what they're seeing from their side in the second half with far too many errors. Change is coming. Eight. Well, Perry Whippy's wearing uh, jersey number 21. And uh, he's on for Mills Muliaina to end his 99th test. So we'll look where Pretty Whipple will go and uh, Anthony Boric for Kieran Reid, whose comeback has been a very successful one. Uh, I think whipple has gone at 10 and Slade will come to the wing. So, and Tui Arva to fullback. So, uh, taking the opportunity to tinker a little bit with what might become an option in games as they progress and if they progress later into this tournament. Well, certainly got one more game, guaranteed, we know that. Crutch! Touch! Pause! Engage! Now, off the bat by Kano! All the way, Jerome Kano! That is a byproduct of a very strong scrum where the Canadian Lucys had to lock on to prevent the shove. Kano took advantage of that. You see there with Chauncey Altu locked on and Kano just too quick out of the boot outside. Explosive speed. Try number, where am I with him? Try number seven in his 45th test for Jerome Kano. And I'll tell you what, no one in this All Black squad deserves uh, to be on the score sheet more than him in this tournament. In fact, the latter part of this year, he has been a standout for the All Blacks on every occasion. And Mike Cron, the member of this, the, the coaching staff, will be most thrilled with this performance. The scrum has been one of the key assets and uh, another one for Slade. And he looks like he's got a wee niggle too, Colin Slade. Grimacing a little bit. 
change for Canada, 17 for three for them. So Scott Franklin from the Prairie Wolf Pack, replacing Jason Marshall. 50 points on the board, 51 to 15. Munro's kick is nicely done this time by Whitelock. As Cowan works it away for Wepu. Now Vito. Cowan clears Wepu. Up he goes on a little searching run. But Owen Franks, in fact, it was Woodcock. Now Toei Arba. Whitelock, nice pass back to Franks. He in turn drops it off to Conrad Smith. And Toei Arba takes it to ground, five metres, in all-black territory. Wepu, away into centre field where Vito sets it up. And all the ball lost, seemed to be lost. And it's been turned over. So Canada have it. Slow ball. Now Munro. Oh, Ryan Smith. And, uh, well, there's a little bit of drizzle falling Ian Smith. But the handling in the second half has been average. It's just a little bit more than a little bit of drizzle. It's uh, becoming quite substantial all of a sudden. Uh, and I suppose there is some sort of uh, excuse, uh, some of the handling. But by and large, uh, these rugby balls these days are a good deal better than they used to be in that department. And uh, I don't think uh, you can use too much of that as an excuse. Here's Karen Crowley. He's talking into his microphone, issuing instructions to his sideline staff. You never ever really see much chatter coming out of this box. One of them has a microphone, and I think that might be Steve Hansen, but they're usually pretty measured in their messages. They trust their players implicitly to solve stuff on the park. So Guilford has just gone and parked himself. Just inside the back, a little bit of Sonny Touch. Bill Williams. Pause, engage. Coward feeds the scrum. Now Wepu. Away for Sonny Bill Williams. Coward. Across for Whitelock. Still on their own side of halfway, and that's been hacked through. Snapped up by uh, Wepu, he's going to have to take the tackle here as the Canadians pile in. Cowan, Slade, he's uh, supposed to be playing on the wing, but he's coming to do the kicking. Wepu was a bit tied up. And uh, a clearing kick made by Matt Evans. And just watch Slade then, he's not comfortable with an ankle. I just wonder if it's his left ankle. If you hadn't picked up the news, Aaron Cruden has been called into the All Blacks squad to make it up to the 30, with Dan Carter dropping out. So 15 gone second half, 51 to 15, and Boric coming up with a line-out take, and that's poor again. Low dipping pass, and Vito couldn't hold it. Three black. Now, oh, this is a poor period on the handling front by the All Blacks. Ian Smith, another change. Yeah, the Franks brothers swapping over. So that's uh, Ben in 17. Yeah, this pass was a difficult one. Even with a dry ball to hang on to from Wepu. Dipped in front. And uh, that's a man with very good ball skills as well, uh, Victor Vito, normally unable to hold on to that. So all not smooth in that room they're a little bit like uh, a bunch of blokes that woke up this morning and their preferred present was gone from under the christmas tree Crutch. that's a very good one ian smith touch pause engage stay line, stay line, Grum just holding up and no more carpenter running into kano 
and the Canadians sealing that off. Six. And just need to settle the All Blacks here. Six sitting off. This game's loosened up too much, so go down the touch line. Go to a line out, construct a set play. <laughs> What's happening, Hori? All Black <laughs> skipper Andrew Hoare. Hori said, kick it out. And that duly has been done. And so the line out about 20 metres away. And just that's Kleeberger as it off his feet straight away. All Black's no chance to compete for that. Eight tries to two so far in the game. Williams brings it down. And the All Blacks might just, for a moment anyway, try and just tighten this up a little. Get something going through the middle, but there's not much happening now. They get some momentum. As Vito continues to hold in the back. And now he has to spin away. And they'll set it up here for Jimmy Cowan. Swings it wide for Wepu. Drops it off for Sonny Bill Williams. Guilford right there with him. Again, the arm goes up as Andrew Hoare takes it in. Now, here's Burridge. He worked away for Guilford. Three already. Is that Guilford? Great acceleration once more. Cowan. Off to Wepu. Double round. Now he sends it away. Opening up here for Slade. Playing on the wing now, Colin Slade. As uh, the All Blacks go straight up the centre through Ben Franks. Not committing enough players, and Canada might have outdone them in here. They did really well. Good defensive effort by the Canadians. Ryan Smith drops the pass off to McKenzie. Lee Berger gets hit by Vito big time. Now Fairhurst. Doing well down the narrow side, Bidens. And now the All Blacks trying to counter ruck as well. Bidens ball loose, Smith. Still going with Andrew Hoare. Now Cowan, Woodcock, Wepu, Toei Arba, Guilford. Sonny Bill Williams gets the All Blacks ninth try today. He's played pretty well, Sonny Bill Williams, this afternoon. A couple of turnovers there, once by the All Blacks, and they were hammering away at the line, and then Canada as they tried to bring it out, and ultimately the All Blacks had numbers to the left. Hugely in their advantage. I had to work at it a bit in the end. And it was Tui Arva and Guilford to Sunny Bill. Easy as you like. Well, it was only subtle, wasn't it? But just look at the extra pace just here from Guilford. It was just five or six steps, but it drew two defenders. It was enough of a threat to bring 21 in. And uh, that was Sean White off the wing. And that created that passageway down the far side. And that's what it needed, that move. It was just going across the field slightly and just five or six of direct quick metres from Zach Guilford. And uh, Sonny Bell too strong, even in that uh, small cramped space. And here's an interesting one, Grant Fox, Wepu kicking. And the crowd have just recognised that here in Wellington. One of their favourite sons is Pity Wepu. Well, Colin Slade has got that. Uh, appears to be a bit of a niggle. So here he is from the sideline. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. We know he is a very accomplished goal kicker, Pity Wepu, and that was evident right there. Uh, just one more look at this. Toyaba, just a little shuffle to the outside, and that extra pace by Guilford. Williams' ability to beat a man one on one on display there. 19 for 5 for Canada. Tyler Hudson for one of the old men of the group, Jamie Cudmore. Right lock controls it once more with assistance there from Andrew Hoare. 
Now Wefu moves it on. Vito, well, he's carried the ball strongly today, Victor Vito. Wefu, and that might have touched one of the Canadian players, doesn't matter anyway, as Munro fields it. And Evans makes the pass away for Fairhurst. Well, they haven't given up here, the Canadians. They like to move the ball through the hand. Ryan Smith goes down in a good tackle from Boric. Fairhurst again. Now Kleberger showing good pace, getting on the outside, but then it falls into the arms of Conrad Smith. Come back. And uh, they'll Stand need to play the line out. More changes. Yes, uh, Andy Allison, 20 for the All Blacks for Jimmy Cowan, and uh, 22 for nine, we're told, for Canada, which is uh, Nathan Hirayama for the experienced Ed Fairhurst. So we'll just see uh, where Hirayama goes. He's uh, looking to go to fullback. They're going to send the fullback. Uh, it looks as if uh, Evans is going to go under the wing. And uh, that'll mean that uh, Sean White goes into halfback. In a fairly lean tournament for some of the dirt trackers for Canada. <laughs> Kieran Crowley has, has used fundamentally 17 players in his starting lineups for the four games. Well, I guess they lack a bit of depth, Canada. So that's why Kieran Crowley well, must be pretty pleased with his team so far in this tournament. They did beat Tonga. They lost to France, although they were competitive for a while, and they drew with Japan, which would have been disappointing for them. Uh, well, the no result. real support there, is there. I think that's just an arm and sympathy more than anything else. The result that hurt uh, Canada's chance of automatic qualification for next year's next time, of course, was last night right here when Tonga won. Yes, of course, and what a result that was. Well, France really didn't turn up, and Tonga did. One of the great upsets in world rugby, perhaps one of the greatest in World Cup history. Around about 18 minutes remaining here at the stadium. 58 to 15. And Andy Ellis now, with his first touch, sends it off to Wepu, drops it off to his old mate Conrad Smith. Ellis again. Now here's a charge from Whitelock. Ellis goes short to Hoare, and he spills it back. And off now to Toyaba. Ellis works it away for Wepu. Now Williams, Sonny Bill, that is. Guilford hasn't had as much action in the second half as the first when he got a hat-trick. Charge up the middle by Ali Williams. Now Wepu slings it on. Not a good pass, but just control. It went back, I think, from Whitelock. Not making a lot of progress here as Wepu goes deep. And Williams sees a hole. And off goes Sonny Bill. Looking for someone to hand it to, and it's Ben French. And that goes one defender. 15 metres away, the All Blacks have got players to burn here, maybe too many. As Conrad Smith can't hang on to it. And off it goes downfield. It's uh, play on, no, it's not. Thanks, mate. Well, he's going for a double knock on there. Certainly knocked on by Conrad Smith, maybe by the one of the Canadians. Well, it always had to be, or it was try number three coming up for Canada. There's Sonny Bill Williams looking for support, and he was waiting for it to arrive, and arrived in Ben Franks and Bumford to Matt Evans. We go, we keep going. And just didn't find its target. There it is there, that's the knock on, double knock on. So the All Blacks are going to go to the bench. This is a very interesting change. You won't see it very often. Brad Thorne is going to replace Colin Slade, which will mean Victor Vito will go to the wing. And uh, Pat, uh, Thorne, of course, will join the pack. So the Wellingtonian starting in seven will end uh, effectively as a 14. Well, he's a great sevens exponent. Here's Colin Slade, who's actually played pretty damn well. And I think they're just protecting him here. He's been carrying that ankle injury for a little while. Get him off. Game's well and truly won, of course. Get ice on it early. Now there's Victor Vito, who is a sevens exponent. 
Oh, has been in recent years. So he's got plenty of speed and skills to play in this position. Special, mo special moment too for Canada for Nanyak Dala in jersey 20 replacing Matt Evans. And he's going straight in there to Mark Victor Vito. And not the first loose forward to play on the wing in this competition. No, that's right. Radenki Samo, of course. Crutch. For the Aussies yesterday. Touch. Pause. Engage. So Sean White to roll this in. And off the back goes Carpenter. Ryan Smith takes the direct route. Now White for Munro. Guilford waits for this. And good work from Zach Guilford. Hasn't done much wrong today, Zach Guilford. As Ellis reaches in. Now Wapu sees a big gap. And off it goes to Ellis. Just couldn't link up, so he takes the tackle. Quickly snapped up by Woodcock. And the All Blacks lining up here, away to the left. As uh, Wepu sends it off to Whitelock, who loses the mouth guard as he takes the tackle. Ellis takes the tackle as well, but Canada got offside. And so the All Blacks will rush to the mark. Brad Thorne, oh, and then he lost it. As he goes to ground, right out in front of the posts. Four stretching in. And the ball loose. Four, six, red. And Off they've infringed again, have the, the Canadians. And this will go to Stay a scrum, up, I'm please. sure, for the All Blacks. Scrum, drag ball. So there is Wepu carrying the ball in two hands with support runners. So defenders held off him. Alice Wetchie went away from his support. He needed to turn that in. Anyway, Woodcock carries it on. It all ends up here, ultimately, with a scrum to the All Blacks. Set up. Right in the no, middle of the field, please, five no. out. Really hard for Canada to defend here. And I just wonder if the All Black forwards will try and make it a statement here in terms of a pushover scrum. They've been absolutely dominant against the Canadians, and nothing would please the tight five more than just to have to walk only five metres. Well, I just see Jerome Kano packing down in the number eight role, so uh, it'll be him with Touch. the control under the feet, if that's to be the case. Ellis feeds the scrub. Kano controlling it nicely. You don't see pushover tries very often these days. Kano still got it, still got it, and scores. Two to Kano today. I think a penalty try was coming anyway, but Kano got it. So good control by him in the boat. A scrum stayed square. Just went reasonably slowly towards the goal line, and that allowed Kano to keep easy control at his feet. It didn't surge quickly. So here it goes. Just I sort of where are we heading? A meter every couple of seconds. Just speeds up a little bit here. Easy at Kano's feet. Just dip a bit, a little bit more power. There you go. Well, that has been uh, the constant plus, hasn't it? The All Black performance at scrum time today, whether it's uh, been attacking or in a defensive mode, it's been rock steady then, under no pressure at all. Wepu gets the, the easy icing here, and the score blows out by seven more. So, ten tries now for the All Blacks. 65 points to 15. Whitelock goes after it's been snapped up here by O'Toole and the All Blacks a little untidy again not for the first time and uh, Canada have an opportunity has quickly moved on here's the man who scored two already 14 Connor Trainor and uh, knocked on by Munro a lapse in concentration 37,000 565 today Grant Nisbet is the official number just a continuation of the massive crowds that have followed this tournament 
And of course, it will continue, no doubt, through the quarters, the semis, and the final as well. Absolutely. Sam White right there. A bit untidy for the second time at kickoff. He won't be very happy with that part of his game today. He's done a lot of other things really well, but just a bit untidy. A couple of times, in fact, two or three times at kickoff, the All Blacks have been untidy. Just a slight hold up here. Canadian player down, but we're almost set to go again. Well, it's been a big day for Jerome Kano. He's picked up a couple of tries. Earlier at this tournament, he scored against Tonga and Japan. So four tries at the tournament puts him in the hunt. Along with uh, some of the flashy backs running around. Touch. Well, maybe the flashy backs will get another Pass. chance here. Engage. Maybe one of those flashy backs now is Victor Vito. That's right, standing out on the right wing side. Here's Kano himself. Oh, lovely again from Kano. He's all power and all grunt. Look at that. What a run from Jerome Kano. Now Ellis clears it off to Wepu and uh, drilling it down and uh, under control from Hirayama. And that's a nice return. And just a wee net gain there. So Wepu content. To look for field position, there's Kano. He's just been a colossus in the past couple of seasons, really, for the All Blacks, and this form has carried on, carried on into this tournament. So Andy Ellis in control as Andrew Hall. Now Ellis slips the pass to Woodcock. And they'll be looking to give Tony Woodcock a full 80 minutes today. Perhaps Wepu has overdone this a bit, but it's a struggle for Hariyama, but he's brought it under control finally, and he, he did well. Sent Conrad Smith one way and went the other. And there is today's man of the match, Jerome, Jerome Kano. Not a very difficult decision, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, no, he's had, he'd been a bit unlucky on a couple of other occasions not to get it. And he's just been a colossus for the All Blacks once again. Four throws. Ali Williams untidy again. That's a dreadful pass this time from Ellis. Tidied up by Conrad Smith, wading through a couple of tackles. Industrious as always today. Ellis, away for Toiava, good power front on. Ellis again feeds it up. And Williams takes it to ground. Ellis works it off to Wepu, swings it wide for Sonny Bill. And here is Guilford. Still 15 metres out, the All Blacks swinging this right and left. Here's Kano. Sonny Bill, here's uh, Toyaba again, up for Woodcock. Well, that's a big tackle on Woodcock now, is he OK? I'm not sure that he is. Well, I'm not sure that he's too good here. He's taken a very heavy knock. And well, it looks like Kleberger yes, it is. Well. One yeah. of the tough men, one of the very best players Canada have shown us in the last uh, three weeks. Uh, he's moving around all right now, but uh, initial concern for him now. And uh, it's a big unit he's been able to bring down. Deb Robinson, the All Black doctor, was there like a shot. Let's have a look at this. Woodcock running freely with the oh, ball. Oh, head, head clash. Head. Yeah. Oh, right there. Oh. No, both players are still down. And he's a tough man, this guy. Kleberger. He actually might have come out of this worse. Yeah, he actually looks like he, act, ooh, he might be vomiting, I think. Not, not well. Well, a nasty collision. And they're going to give both of these players a bit of time. Oh, 
here's Woodcock. I don't know. 80th test, 80th test match today. And looks like he'll be away as well, which will mean that Owen Franks will have to come back. Yes, he was out before he hit the deck. Just completely lost control of everything there. He's actually walking back under his own steam, though. Here he is. Oh. Changing direction and going to the dressing room with Adam Kleeberger. He's played a bit of rugby in New Zealand and Australia and England. Seven minutes remaining Watch. here at the stadium. Okay. 50-point margin. The average between these two teams when they've played four times previously is 49. And the clearing kick. Nicely spiralled away downfield. Good kick. Well, that's a good bit of work in the closing stages of the game. In fact, he's had a torrid time, Aaron Carpenter, the number eight from Canada. He's uh, been very strong at times off the back uh, of a retreating scrum and able to rescue a side Stay there right. very, very effectively. We've had a fair bit of rain in this uh, second half. Hasn't been particularly heavy, but it's been consistent. As Alice goes wide here for Sonny Bill Williams. Well, the ball pops out on the Canadian side, and Scott Franklin has it. Andy Ellis was trying to get his hands in there, but was warned off it by the referee. Little kick through by Carpenter. Clever stuff in good hands from Guilford. He's made a real statement here today. As Ellis stretches in, but penalty to Canada. No, the mark is here. Well, only 10 penalties in the game. So the referee has let it go, let it flow. Here is Owen Franks. He had a good day on the scrum front. He'd be happy that he's got his brother alongside him for a few minutes at least. So Canada, not seen much of the ball in the second half. Not at the right end of the field anyway. Ryan Hamilton throws. Ball delivered up to Sean White. And having a go through the back division, Traynor. Had a big game. He won't forget this one in a hurry. Two tries against the All Blacks. O'Toole number seven has Canada bring it back to this near side and a lovely pass taken by Jeb Sinclair. He can't get it away though as far as Carpenter and the All Blacks through Isaiah Toyaba. Hands away, Red! Four throws the pass for Wepu. Drops the little one through and Guilford read it well and off he goes. Looking for some support now. He's got plenty of toe here. Guilford, he's going to make it four. Oh, well done, Zach Guilford. He's had a tough few weeks, this young man, and this is the only way to answer it. Four tries to him today. He's worked like a Trojan, like he always done, and this is... Great little bit of vision by Webu and a greatly weighted kick, perfectly weighted. Guilford probably called it, and away he went, and once he was in open space, the Canadian defence was never going to catch him. Well, this is why a lot of people like Perry Webu in this playmaker role, because he's got this instinct that other players seem to feed off. And Guilford was uh, the recipient there, but he was on exactly the same wavelength, uh, just a step ahead of Canada the whole way. A wonderful finish from a guy who's super quick. And as we said in the first half, it's very hard to replace pure pace when you get anything like half a gap. And uh, Zach Guilford, yes, the headlines will be for the right reason tomorrow. 
only one other All Black has scored four tries against Canada, and he's involved in this game. Although now I think he's sitting on the bench. Mills Muliaina scored four. Back in 2003, as Wepu converts 72 to 15. Well, it doesn't matter that he's got a number that says he plays on one side of the park. He plays all over the park. Kickoff is made then with just a couple of minutes remaining. White lock, and I think Ian Smith, Kevin Mialami yep. might be on there. He gets another cap, a cheap one. Probably takes over captain as well. Who knows? As Wepu's kick again and not controlled by the Canadians. And now the All Blacks could produce another one here. Owen Franks feeds it up. And Whitelock takes it to ground. Ellis gets there quickly. And uh, nicely controlled by Swift with a hack through. It was offside play though against Canada. Ellis. We do again, drops another little kick in, and this is pretty clever too because it stays in and forces Canada to take it out. Yeah, that is that cleverness and the awareness of Pity Wepu. It's just such a good feel for the game. This man sees space well, perfectly weighted and directed kick. So Kevin Mialamu racking up test number 89. Tipped by Boric. And Whitelock has it. There's Williams. Ben Franks hands it off to Mia Lamu. Scored 11 tries today, the All Blacks. Looking for one last pop, and oh, what a pass. Wepu gives it off to Vito, and the flying right winger picks up his second try. You can see the pattern of play there from the All Blacks. At times they've tried to do this today, is get that rumble going around the fringes and through the middle as possible as Richie McCaw looks on and when you've finally taken out all the defenders in close you look for an inside pass exactly what Wepu did to Vito well he had three options he could have had Owen Franks he could have had uh, Andy Ellis who was running back in support of his own pass there uh, Wepu but he chose the closest one off his shoulder one he knows very well and the teammate Victor Vito very popular Wellington try that one put together Wepu makes the conversion, referee blows the whistle, and the game is over, and the All Blacks have won it by 79 points to 15, 12 tries to two in the finish. Well, a very entertaining game, but Canada scored first through a penalty the first time the All Blacks have been behind in this tournament, but then the All Blacks struck back with a number of long-range tries, some pretty impressive power running, getting over the advantage line, recycling the ball quickly, some good finishing. Then they went into the second half with a messy period for a while where handling lapses cost them. Canada scored first, but they finished the game strong now after rearranging their side, a little bit through injury and a little bit through experimenting as they look ahead in this tournament. But all in all, a pretty impressive and emphatic performance by the All Blacks. 12 tries, 8 conversions, 1 penalty, to 2 tries, 1 penalty and 1 conversion, 79 points to 15. So this out there on the try scoring list for the Guildford, 4 of them, Vito and Kano got a couple as well, and an emphatic victory for New Zealand. Well, look at on the other side of the ledger there, two tries to Canada, and look, that's some reward for them, both to trainer. But, well, they were totally outclassed. They never gave up Canada. They came with a good attitude to use what little ball they had. At times they lacked skill, but they had lots of courage and got some reward. So, 
it's off to the quarterfinals now for the All Blacks. And of course for Canada, that is the end of their tournament. And they will regard their win over Tonga as the highlight, no doubt about that. The draw against uh, Japan and losses to the two teams from the pool who will advance to the quarterfinals, the All Blacks and France. So smiles all around there for the All Blacks. One or two injury concerns out of today's game. So we're standing by now to hear from Canadian skipper Pat Reardon with Ian Smith. Well, Pat, uh, on the wrong side of a pretty dominant All Black performance today, uh, but you had some high points just either side of half time. Yeah, I think uh, it was awesome. We talked a lot about uh, making most, most of the opportunity. I think uh, Connor Trainer here right before half time, you know, five meters off the line, and he went for it. And again, uh, just after half time, half time too. So that was great by him. Yeah, when they run from deep, they're particularly dangerous. They have so many running options. You, you can't afford to miss tackles. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. I think the the speed the speed of the contact and the, the speed of some of the the outside backs uh, is a real factor today. This is our last chance to ha have a chat to you. Uh, you've made inroads in this tournament. You'd be pretty pleased. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit disappointed with the way we finished here today, but uh, real proud of the guys, the way they, they played as a team and individuals, and uh, all the support down here has just been fantastic. Great to have you here, uh, Pat. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Yes, they've made a major contribution, have the Canadians. They're not uh, going to automatically qualify for next time, but you'd be surprised if they weren't there as we look at the final stats in the game. Yeah, well, the top two are pretty even, but uh, the All Blacks' attacking prowess meant Canada had to make a lot of tackles, and it also meant that they missed a lot, and that hurt them majorly. 12 clean line breaks, and the All Blacks all power at scrum time, getting four against the feed and also a pushover. Well, he was the 65th All Black captain today, Andrew Hoare, and he is with Ian Smith. Well, Andrew Hoare, uh, very dominant uh, on the scoreboard, uh, on the back of some pretty useful set-piece work, which is the core of the game. Yeah, no, obviously we uh, went out there with focus to get our scrum going. We're pretty happy with how that went, and line-out went pretty well, but probably the real concerns are the kick-off and how we put ourselves under pressure after scoring points. But finishing uh, another one of the strengths today is some, some great tries from deep. Yeah, no, it's great to see some of those backs that haven't played a lot of footy, like Zach Guilford get out there and cross the chalk four times is pretty special. So, you know, we've got a talented squad and hopefully we can uh, make use of it in the next couple of weeks. Well, all of a sudden it becomes competitive in a number of areas where you thought your pets had them covered and they're waking up this morning for the news that uh, Dan's not going to be around. Uh, I suppose that adds to the resolve. Yeah, it certainly does. Obviously, uh, you can't, can't lie about it. He's going to be pretty hard to replace. He's a special player and we've just got to get around there and make sure that all 29 of us left get in there and make it easy for the guy wearing number 10 and I think they play pretty well today and if we can keep building on that we'll, uh, we'll go a long way towards winning this thing. Test match number 65, uh, uh, sorry, test captain number 65 uh, and that's pretty special for a Taranaki man. Yeah, no, it's huge and uh, you know, great, great honour to, to be captain on the All Blacks and uh, to come back here to my home Wellington and uh, have my mum and dad in the stands too so it's uh, pretty special and, and I'll pretty, be pretty sure I'll be keeping this jersey. Good on you Andrew. Cheers Smithy. There he is, yes, a special day for Andrew Hoare, captaining the All Blacks. And uh, he was in charge when they won the match by 79 points to 15. So as the crowd uh, file out of the stadium, let's re review the second half highlights. And from the All Blacks' point of view, it was hardly a highlight, but uh, Canada cashed in. Yeah, shocking pass by Jimmy Cowan, which was cashed in by O'Connor. Sorry, trainer, Connor trainer. Try number two for him. And this is the All Blacks opening their account in the second half. Sonny Bill Williams by Conrad Smith. Jimmy Cowan, who had made the mistake with the pass earlier, got a chance to redeem himself straight away. So Jimmy Cowan scoring try number seven. And uh, the All Blacks had made a change here. And Kano playing in that number eight showed real power and a bit of pace too to score from the scrum right under the posts and the All Blacks brought up 50 at this stage but the tries just kept coming yeah the All Blacks uh, got a little bit wobbly for a while but this is Sonny Bill Williams try they just moved it wide and one on one he's a hard man to stop 
Well, we saw the first try scored by Jerome Kano, and it wasn't very long before another one came. And this is an old-fashioned pushover. Don't see these very often these days. In fact, very rare. But the control was good, and Kano simply collapsed on the ball, and the try was given. So this is a deaf little chip kick from Pity Whippy, perfectly weighted, called for by Guildford, who had a lot of work to do. And just once he got in space after beating a couple of players, Andy Al struggling to keep up with him, and that was try number four for Zach Guildford. And then right towards the end of the game, have a look, look at this from Wepu. Victor Vito, who was actually stationed on the wing, took the impasse, scored the try. And those were the 12 tries scored by the All Blacks. Two to Canada. 79 points to 15. It's good to see that Adam Kleberger, who was involved in a heavy clash with Tony Woodcock, is OK. And he's got his uh, participation badge. All of the teams that are exit the World Cup at the pool stage get a badge to say thanks very much for coming. And Canada did make a big contribution to this tournament. Oh, I think they've grown in stature, Canada. Yes, they got heavily beaten today. They have been before by the All Blacks. But I think of all the, many of the Minnow Nations here, and I say that with due deference, they've grown in stature and got better as the tournament's gone on. Coverage of Rugby World Cup 2011 was brought to you by Telecom, Bunnings Warehouse and Heineken.